I think it's still the golden age for information technology. What drives me is really the ability of producing technology that can improve basically society or society can benefit from. I'm Marco Caccamo and I'm a professor in computer science. My research focuses on real-time and embedded systems, and specifically in safety-critical systems like in avionics and automotive applications. Safety-relevant real-time systems. Our world has long been controlled by computers. Smart mobility, smart home, the Internet of Things, the so-called Industry 4.0. Computers are assuming in more and more areas control tasks of an ever-increasing complexity. For Marco Kakamo, it was love at first sight. When I first got in contact with computers when I was not even a teenager, I, immediately to my mind I recognized the opportunities that could come from these machines that at the time I mean, it was some sort of magic box. In the meantime, Kakamo has become a leading expert for real-time systems. Those are systems which reach decisions and give control impulses from sensor data immediately. In cars, aircraft, robots, and production lines. Another promising field for the future, smart production and energy supply networks. One possibility, for example, is for production lines to be closely integrated with alternative sources of energy, such as wind energy. A closed loop. If there is a lot of energy, production is increased. If there is less wind, the technology reduces production in advance. A win-win situation for environmental protection and cost efficiency. The way we can have an impact in the society is either creating new technology but actually also we have a great opportunity of training some of the best minds. A completely autonomous solar airplane that, once it is in the sky, can fly from sunrise to sunset, just controlled by a control unit. A student project, but also a trial laboratory for Kakamo's fundamental research work. So basically what I cannot accomplish myself as a single scientist, my students, might, might be able to succeed. And so, you know, the fact that I kind of give them the best training is, is basically, I f it's something that makes me feel very accomplished. What is here being tested as a prototype in close cooperation with industry will at some time in the future be used in safety-relevant control systems, where real-time data must be processed and depended upon completely. Sometimes to my students I ask, okay, okay, well, I mean, how many times do you see the software in your car crashed, okay? And they kind of look at me, puzzle, and they say, never, most of the time, okay? <laughs> and then I ask them, okay, how many times did you see the software on your computer that crashed? They say, oh yeah, plenty of times. You can get the difference, right? The thing is that you give it for granted. These are the kind of systems that if they fail, they end up on the newspaper. A computer may crash at some time, but many other things never. After 17 years at the University of Illinois, he is now moving with his family to Munich. My son is six years old and, uh, you know, his vision right now about Europe is pretty much a fun place because <laughs> he goes back for holidays, we go skiing there. Uh, summer to the sea, so basically it's all fun. It's exciting for him. A few weeks later, a visit to his future home. With the help of Kakamo's Humboldt Professorship, the Interdisciplinary Institute for Cyber Physical Systems in Production Technology should be established here at the Technical University in Munich so as to bundle the strengths of the field's electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and computer science. It's a great opportunity because it gives me 
the possibility of ramp up my research to a new level. So I'm thrilled about this uh, opportunity and I want to take it at the best I can. To make computer architecture as robust as possible, to exclude sources of error, to develop certification standards, those are the tasks he has set himself. Ever more powerful multi-core systems are taking over ever more sensitive tasks. Kakomo is already working now on ensuring that they will do so safely in the future. What drives me is the desire to push this technological transition that ultimately you're going to see it in a system like automotive and avionics. Okay, So it might take 10 years or, I don't know, maybe 20 years, but I hope that what we are developing today, tomorrow will actually run on real automobiles and airplanes or maybe satellites.